This might look like the sea, but it's 24 kilometers from the coast. People are camping on roofs, several hundred taking shelter in the stands of a stadium. This view from above provides a clearer picture of Cyclone E-Day's destruction below. This situation is very, very serious. Uh, it's, uh, it's a trouble. I mean, yeah, I can say that uh, we are in trouble. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a dangerous situation because uh, the people are dying because of this flood. And aid organizations are now racing to save them. Helicopters often the only way to get to them. The helicopter is equipped with a winch, which is crucial for the rescue operation that uh, is currently underway with the South African Air Force. And we are hoping to boost the rescue capability with this helicopter. The World Food Program stepped up its food distribution today, but it is still not fast enough. Help, we're suffering here. Help Mozambique. Mozambique has declared its first ever national state of emergency. And as people struggle to find food, water and shelter, there is a growing concern the floods have brought waterborne illnesses such as cholera. And not just in Mozambique. Neighboring Malawi and Zimbabwe have been hit too. More than the, the infrastructure we are concerned about right now is to get to help the communities, to help individuals. Zimbabwe's military is leading operations to rebuild roads so aid can get into the disaster zone. And there is no relief in sight. The coming days are expected to bring more heavy rains. Kayla Hounsel, CBC News, London. Let's bring in CBC meteorologist Johanna Wagstaff. And Joe, what made this particular storm so bad? Well, Ian, there were several factors at play here, starting with the track itself. It was born just off the coast of Mozambique, meaning torrential downpours had already saturated the ground before it moved back out into the channel, gained strength, and then made landfall as a Category 2 storm a week later in a very low line uh, part of the country, which meant a storm surge of over six meters pushed that wall of water inland. And then the storm stalled out on the Mozambique uh, Zimbabwe border with all of that extra rain running back into what is now an inland ocean. Probably the biggest factor though, half a million people live in uh, poverty. So structures that just couldn't handle this kind of wind or this kind of rain in. And beyond this immediate emergency, uh, aid workers who are there are sounding the alarm about climate change. Tell us about that. Well, we've seen more and more research connecting the impacts of cyclones, uh, higher storm surge, stalled out storms that mean more rainfall uh, and more moisture in all of these storms. But this part of the world has definitely seen an increase. Not only are they dealing with increased flooding, but also increased droughts, which is affecting their crops. And this is a pattern we are seeing all around the world. Extreme weather events becoming more common in the most vulnerable places. Thanks, Johanna. You're welcome.